for my accountant. So this is like your accountant stuff they listed as. You got account lists. So this is kind of your list of accounts, which are the underlying baseline stuff that you need to create the financial statements, kind of like the chart of accounts. You've got your balance sheet comparison. Now, I don't know why they put this one down here because they already had it up top. It's basically just the balance sheet report. So it's kind of funny. And they, they got your balance sheet. Yeah, we already saw that. That's kind of up top. So I don't know why that's repeated down here, really. The general ledger is kind of like the transaction detail report. If I open that up, that you would see if I go to my balance sheet and drill down into the checking account. This is your transaction detail, but only for the checking account. If you look at the general ledger, you typically think of it as, you know, like that transaction detail, but it has all the accounts in it, right? And then possibly you can filter it uh, from there. So closing that one back out, you've got your journal report. So this is a, a nice report. We'll talk more about it later that bre breaks out all the detail that you've been putting in uh, by date, but it gives you the actual journal entries, even with a form. So you entered an invoice and it gives you the journal entry related to the invoice. So if you want to practice your debits and credits and try to understand what they're doing, uh, with regards to debits and credits, which accounts are affected, not in terms of just increases and decreases, but with debits and credits, this is a useful form. It also might be useful to, to show your supervisor or your client, if you're a bookkeeper, the work that you did. And you may be able to construct a billing process based on how many accounts were impacted, right? So you can say, hey, look, if I, if I do work this month that has this many transactions or this many accounts impacted, I'll charge you this much versus so much if, they, if you're in another threshold, which could be one way to kind of set your billing. Profit and loss comparison, we already saw that. It's a variant of the profit and loss. So same with the profit and loss here, profit and loss. Recent automa automatic uh, transactions. So if you have automatic transactions turned on, then this will give you some detail about those. Recent transactions, so this gives you some recent transaction information. Reconciliation reports, the main one you would think would be uh, your bank reconciliation, which is kind of a special report because it's more like an internal control report. Gives you more detail on the checking account, but it also, like the double entry accounting system itself with its balancing mechanism, gives you, gives you an internal control, more confidence about the whole accounting system altogether. So it's quite important. We have a whole report on bank reconciliations. We got the reoccurring, uh, uh, recurring template lists or a list of the templates, statement of cash flows. We already saw that up top. It's down here too. Transaction detailed by account, given your transactions by account. Transaction list by date. We're gonna work on this one a couple times too. It's kind of like the journal over here. But instead of having the debits and credits, it's a little bit more streamlined. It tries to give you all your transactions in essence by date. But you don't. But you have a split item, but you don't have the, all the accounts impacted. And if there's more than two accounts, you get the split thing here. But this is another one that if you just want to count your transactions and possibly come up with a billing based on that, then this could be useful. You can say, hey, look, these are the transactions I did for you last month. I'm going to bill you if you're within this range, maybe I bill you so much and so on. But some transactions have more detail than others. That's why the journal report has, you can try to count the actual accounts impacted or something and come up with a billing rate based on that maybe. Then you got your transaction uh, list with splits. So this is nice because this is more like the journal report. You've got your transaction list, but anytime you have those splits, it's going to give you that more information. So this is another, th th this is kind of nice. Uh, I haven't really used this one as much. It gives you, it gives you the detail, not in terms of a journal entry, but increases and decreases, but then it breaks out these longer transactions. So, so we might dive into that one more uh, in the future. And then you've got your good old trial balance. This is a quite useful report. It is in essence, the balance sheet on top of the income statement. And I'm going to, 12, 31, 2, 2. And so when you're doing your journal, your data input, you might just want to open this report instead of the balance sheet and income statement so that you can just have this one report that's streamlined and you can check your data input and drill down on the accounts. So I highly recommend checking that out because it can save you time in terms of having multiple tabs open up top. So we'll, we'll start when we start to dig into to our our uh, practice problems sometimes i'll open the trial balance 
a lot of times at the end to kind of check our numbers and get used to it. So then we've got our, our more payroll uh, reports down below, which would be applicable if payroll was on. So the general idea, every time you do a data input, you're thinking, what's the impact balance sheet income statement, your major financial transactions, and all the other reports that can be quite overwhelming are really oftentimes most of them given more information about one or multiple line items or possibly are simply some variant upon the balance sheet and the income statement. So don't let those all those variations overwhelm you because because you know the balance sheet and the income statement are the major reports and then everything else kind of fits in somewhere uh, to them in some cases. If you think about it that way, it doesn't get quite as overwhelming, hopefully. And so we'll go into more of some of the major reports in future presentations.